The Great Gods War Prior Events. If they were leaving, then the orcish settlement that they use for recon and everything is trying to switch out roles. If that's the case, they're going to wonder why they're not here and report back to the main encampment. So you take quarter damage because you're raging and rage of the bear, so you take half damage already, which is good because you're resisting against a uh, fourth level blight. So you just hear, Mears, I is dying, Hilda! And uh, Tofi like looks to Rex and Zakaris. They're two of them are about to leave. People in the towers. They're about to war the main encampment. Ryder, you stop feeling the hurt. Great God's War Call. We're dead. I guess I'm post. I'm so <laughs> Rex, this is a mess. But I'm at your service anyway, Jack and Ash River, by the way. <laughs> oh. Rex River's here. Very, very sad boy hour. Rada Hopkins. <laughs> Go, go, gopher. And I am your DM. Welcome back to Miss Roll Adventures, where the players make plans and horribly execute them. We're missing someone. We are, in fact, missing happen? someone. <laughs> and they are, will currently not be in the session. I mean, we will figure out a few things later on. <clears throat> Does anyone so, have an impromptu diamond? Worth a thousand gold pieces precisely. Diamond, you said. <laughs> Jake, what's oh, no, no. are you anyway. trying to cast? I can't cast it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a... Never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> what happened last time? Resolving a fight at the Orcish settlement. Well, rather the Orcish scouting settlement. The party suffered their first loss. Zacharis died up against the line of a fence. They are returning back to home. Well, relatively speaking. Relatively speaking, yes. <laughs> but... And what they'll find there will make Ryder... We don't know. No, we do not. It'll be a sight. So, we are kicking it up. Oh, and right before we ended last time, Bina spoke to Jacqueline and confessed that she helped Quinn leave the ship back at Zakara. Um, and as a result of that, uh, there was conversing when an orc decided to climb the ship and was Bina subsequently turned curb to stomped. <laughs> Bina took out her built built up anxiety to turn that orc into green paste. <laughs> and that's where we are coming back. So Jacqueline, you just witnessed Bina standing I there. Would, I I just witnessed something spectacular. <laughs> you witnessed Bina in a very different tone sort of uh, come crushing down onto this man. You can see the eyes, the uh, trickling effect soon fades, and you can actually hear the strain of muscles as they're starting to retract back into her normal stature.
That's what's why it's showing. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. Good to let off, off some steam at times. However, I don't know what this orc was going to do. <laughs> so it might have been overkill, but effective. Well, you were talking about scouts, right? Precisely. He was already downed, however. He could, at the moment, not fight back because his sternum was caved in. But, as I said before, what do we have to do? I do hope he's dead. I do assume. <laughs> <laughs> you can see him. We, uh, Jacqueline has learned that that doesn't really mean much <laughs> sometimes. Fair enough. As uh, this has been going on, at this point, Bina tries dragging the body off into the forest. All right, we should go back then and... Keep an eye out, right? Mm-hmm. Precisely. You see that she's sort of out of it. Like, there's this, uh... Almost... Non-conscious presence about her right now. Um, is it kind of this, a similar thing to the immediate first level of Exhaustion of Wildheart? That uh, both does? Not exactly. It's... Okay. Fairly different than that, but, um... In comparison to... It could be as if someone just was... You've seen Gopher go from a rage. It's very similar to that, except almost at a heightened level. Alright. Yes, we will climb back up. Um, does look like you need to rest, which is... Unfortunate timing, but... I'll be fine, I just need to... Relax some. I don't need to rest. We shall make make sure the boat is in tip top shape. I'm sure it is, but can't be too careful. And take it from there. The first scout is dealt with. Do not know how many more will be showing up. Well, we'll keep an eye out. Uh, I going start, back up. I, yeah. Ooh, go ahead. I was like, I start climbing the. Oh, okay, yeah. Going back up ladder. and uh, keeping an eye out. Uh, both of you can make perception checks. But my dice, for some reason, for another. That is 14 on my part. 14? Okay. Yeah. Um, you both are keeping extremely well eye out. Bina especially, even though she seems to have been, like, holding herself up against the side of the banister, kind of, like, looking down... You can see, like, part of her arm still twitching, leg here and there. She has to kick off to the side. She's keeping extreme eye out and paying very close attention to the motion of trees and seeing if any of them rock or anything like that. But, uh... We'll cut back to the group. So, you all are traveling back to the ship brother in tow and traveling along is anyone doing anything otherwise we'll just fast forward nope mm. uh no just carrying the cares back I'd assume it's probably a very quiet trip back does sound as if uh, it is very quiet. Tofi is paying very close attention to the ground as you all are stepping. Um, oh yeah, that's right. But doesn't appear to do anything. Nothing seems to be happening. And you're all able to effectively make it 
towards the ship. Jacqueline, Bina, as you both are standing on top of the ship, paying close attention, there's a moment where Bina perks up Jacqueline, and you can see she points over towards what looks to be like a fairly smaller tree in comparison to the rest of the trees. You can see that it's shaking softly. What do you think that is? I don't know. It's... Something's coming this way. I, um... I go into the... On the ship, into the direction of the tree and stand, like, as close to the edge as I can, just keeping an eye on it. Okay. As I'm walking. Kind of keeping moon shadow in the back of my mind, like my hand on it, and just... Walk, even though... We're 30 feet up, and a melee weapon won't do shit. <laughs> Never know. You know. Huck it. it. Huck it, Adam. I, I can't get it back. <laughs> you can run down there, pick it up. But uh, Bina does a similar fashion, except she's going onto the other side of the boat, and you can see that she has her battle axe drawn again, and she's, like, huffing in immediate sort of, like, uh, frantic manner. Um, her muscles are slowly expanding, slowly de-expanding and retracting. But, um... If it is after... trouble, I will act as the first line of defense. As best as I can. As you say this, she nods to you. <laughs> Nodding to you? That's when breaking the tree line, you first see Tofi. You see Tofi... Oh no, you would have seen whoever was in the front, which would have been Ryder. Oh, I see Ryder. Yeah, Thank you see God. Ryder. You see him sulking, slowly walking towards the ship itself. And then behind him, you see um, Rex, followed by a small child that you have never seen before. And I shake, well, I, I shake my head in my mind's eye of Ryder bringing another child back onto the ship. <laughs> And following them, you see Gopher and Tofi carrying Zakaris arm in arm. Bina. It's them. No, there's been a problem. What do you mean? Go prepare a hammock. Zacharis is, well, he's unconscious at least, unsure of what happened. Ryder's looking very distraught, which is you. You do see a body Chalea. Sure, sure. What's this fucking full staff name? Nature Chalela. Yeah, nature. Yeah. <laughs> Chalela's the spell. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Right, yeah. Well, he uses Chalela on the stick. Whatever. Yeah. The stick. Ryder is looking very distraught, carrying. Some of Zacharis' possessions, I... Okay, okay. And uh, she runs downstairs. You can hear some shuffling. Everyone else, as you're approaching the ship, you break the tree line. What's everyone doing? It's a ship. So... We'll bring, we'll go up there. We'll tell him what happened. And I suggest we should rest for the time being. But when we, we only have one ladder, right? Yeah, there's only one ladder yeah. to get onto it. So how are we going to, so how are we going to carry Sakaris up there? The best we can with ropes and people climbing up. If we, um, as morbid as it sounds, attach him to part of him to myself and part of him to Gopher, we would both be able to walk up in tandem on the ladder. Not like splitting him, I mean, his lower half ties to the chest of Gopher 
and his upper half ties to me. Yeah. Yeah, we could try that. Okay. I nod my head. Ryder, you said you were going up first? Yeah, I'll go up first. Okay. Everyone else that's down there tying yeah. Zacharis up. I walk up to Jacqueline. We need to talk. Where's the other two? We will talk about one thing at a time. Bina comes back up from below the deck. Um, and is... Uh, 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 there's Rex. A writer. Bina's coming up from below the deck. Kind of uh, rushing in. The hammock's made. Everything's prepared. I mean, they were already kind of made, but I straightened it out and put a little bit of some extra bedding into it. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more uh, restful. There'll be no need for that. I I hand over the stick to uh, Jacqueline. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Stitch. Nature's wrath. That's what it's called. Nature's wrath to Jacqueline. Nature's grasp. 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 I like wrath better. Than <laughs> okay. I mean, I do too. But yeah. okay. Anyways, and I and I, and I guess I'll just say, Sakura has. He has fallen in battle. All right. And I give you this, the staff. We're bringing his body up now. We should at least try to give him a proper burial somewhere. I feel like resurrection is out of the question. For yeah. it is not what I feel he would want. And I just turn around and I just go look. I just go to the edge of the ship, just looking out, waiting for everyone to come back up. For now, I'll just stand there holding nature's grass, waiting. Okay. <clears throat> everyone else climbs up the ladder, unless anyone stayed on the bottom. No. Uh, nope. I'm um, going up. With everyone climbing up to the top, um, Gopher, Tofi, both climb up and are carrying what looks to be a limp, already stiffened corpse of Zakaris. They lay him up against the side. Turns out I never should have left. See, there's uh... someone up. Seeing as you and Ryder were closest to him, Jacqueline. Do you... How do you want to deal with the body? I mean... He could bury... Burial, it. The only way that we do it. I... Bury him. Bury him? There's no coming back from where he is now. Not for him. Yes. But there there are more ways than just burial that people like to be sent off. But if it is a burial you wish, it is a burial we shall do. My only fear is that his in death, he might have it worse than in he ever had in life. He is, a, he is in the grasp of Maximilian now. Do I know of Maximilian? Before I say that? 
Uh, do yes. I know of his patron? Yes. I do? Okay. You and me patron. up there. Yeah. Okay. We were the two there when he showed up. And I, I know his name and everything? Yeah. Because, like, yeah. I know as me, as a player, I know his name and what he looks like and everything, yeah. but I yeah. forget Jay, if yeah. Jacqueline does. Yeah, Jacqueline does because when okay. that red-haired individual showed up on the ship, mm-hmm. with uh, those that were on the top were you Felix and Zacharis and mm-hmm. uh, the red haired man spoke of Maximilian okay only time will tell we may not ever know yeah. now seeing Seeing as you all came back fairly beat up and in poor state, is there someone who is of more emotional fortitude to tell the story? What happened? I can tell you nothing. I go up to Jacqueline and I'll, I'll explain everything what happened. Okay, so the whole fight and everything like that. Yes, explain okay. everything. So you effectively oh. know what happened at the camp. I'll admit I know very little. With yeah, a little like... distress. I'll explain it to you. Um, she looks to you, Rex, with not really skepticism, but just like the look of wondering. And then says, I wonder. And she just trails off. You just say wondering, or just one lock, lock off. No, right? no, she she does she doesn't say anymore. Her voice trails off, and she just kind of looks into space thinking Ryder I I look over do you have a shovel in that bag I take out the shovel I walk over and I take it if you would like to come take part in this part uh do you know what is it still night or morning? Um, it's at this point it's sun sunset. When you were traveling up towards the uh, when you first essentially encountered Tofi, it was a little bit after noon. So traveling, waiting, um, and then traveling back, it would probably be closer to sunset now. Uh, yeah, here's a question. Mm-hmm. Do we want to do this here, or do we want to move to a different location to do this? I figured I was uh, going to let you mourn for now, but um, we shouldn't stay here. If one of the orcs from the tribe were able to leave, they're going to inform the main camp. By informing the main camp, they're going to be on guard. They're going to send out a garrison of troops to investigate. That also includes searching the vicinity itself. And uh, I think I, for one, can also attest to this. We are not in the condition to retaliate. Um, as Tofai speaking, it kind of uh, snaps Jacqueline back into reality. S- speaking of being on guard and sending people out, actually, um, shortly after I arrived back at the ship, we had a small um, visitor. They did send a scout. The scout made it here. Me and Bina swiftly dealt with him. Okay. So, he is not wrong. We do not have time. That also means that if it was shortly after you came, 
they have a faster travel to get from the camp to here than the original passage that we took. For all we know, they might already have troops marching. Go for. Yeah. Would you mind? Leave. You are a head pilot. All right. Um, I head to the wheel. Is there a place you would like us to go in particular? Tell me where to go, and I'll. Ascend. Closest town from here, isn't it just Akawa? Precisely. Uh, no, there is a closer town. Um, oh. Effectively, you could travel anywhere. Um, post, you've never uh, encountered a ship that's been in the air, so all this is sort of a little different to you, although with your background and those that you associate with, um, it's not out of the ordinary, effectively. Like, it's not out of the mind or the creativity that's possible with arcane arts. Right, I'm not exactly panicked or nervous, because mm-hmm. this is commonplace for me to run into something of weird technology or arcane, um, but I'm definitely curious. Mm-hmm. Um, you would also know of where... Your um, associates were stationed at. I'm trying. I'm trying to stay away from divulging too much immediately. Um, but do I remember what town we were in? It wasn't a town. It was in a small because you were just traveling from Long your time. town, so you were effectively setting up camp somewhere. The camp that you found, um, because of some of the associates, uh, preferred to be out of sight from the sun, so there was an outcropping uh, northeastern from where you are right now. Right. Um, or, sorry, northwestern, which uh, would take you to relatively an open field that has uh, rolling hills. Would I... I would know where they were headed to. Where their final destination was going to be. Yes, they would have been traveling more north. However, um... You're not sure how long it would have taken. Or whether or not they continued in that direction after your... Procuring. Right. I think oh, it'll probably... I don't think I'm going to say anything. I'm going to stay and keep my eye out to see if I can see anything familiar or up in the air. Okay. So where, what, where are we going? <laughs> oh, we're gone. Are we traveling? Uh, we don't, we could, we could just stay. I don't know how this functions, but if we're able to just stay in the air, I, I don't think they would be able to do anything to us. But they will know us still because we're in the air and they're they're, yeah. they're from the mountains. They're bound to see us. Well, if they see us, sure. But they I look over and I, I look over to Sakaris's body. I still think we should do something with his body. Then we should travel out more north. That way, they don't follow us. We don't have to return to a town. The nearest town is nearly about two days. Well, it's three days by foot. I don't know how fast we would get there on this, but... Well, like, how long it took us to get here from Sakara? Uh, better part of, like, eight or nine days, I think. Eight or nine days, and it takes two days on foot. So it shouldn't take us that long, honestly. Maybe, yeah. like, two hours. <clears throat> It'll take more than two hours. Uh, you say that it takes two days to, um... The nearest village... Right, so far? Uh, from foot, yeah. I think we can get there in, in a little bit much shorter, and I think that's the best place to um, recover from us. I don't think we should go to civilization. I should have started with that, but 
If people see me, they're going to panic. If they see a flying ship, they're going to panic. Deja vu from the first time we visit Sakara and a bunch of uh. What town are you? Cool. What town are you talking about? It's the town of uh. We're trying to remember what I. It's been so long. I've been hiding up in the mountains for over a year now. I don't know if it's still called this, but it used to be um, the Diamond's Top. Mm. It was a large entertainment sort of deal. It was it was something that you would go to to enjoy yourself. A lot of individuals there tend to vary. But, um, that was years ago, a while back when, it was well into a decade ago. You can see he's getting more and more emotional as he has to talk about going further yeah. back. Don't worry about it. We will avoid it then. But we should go somewhere else. We can find another place just by going north. If we go out far enough, they're not going to follow us that far. They're not going to see anything to travel. I doubt that they would even go beyond the trees. All right. Then we go up north. I ascend and I head north. As you do, post and Tofi, uh, there's an immediate sort of like lurch as you're being lifted upwards softly. Sorts of balance out, and then you start traveling more north. And I keep my eye out on the ground for anything familiar to me. Okay. I thought you'd be super excited, like, oh, a flying ship! And this is an exactly <laughs> exciting time, especially considering there's a corpse a mere 20 feet. Traveling north takes about an hour before you pass the tree line itself. Once you do, there is rolling hills. You're about 300 feet up post, so keeping a close eye to the ground is a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. But since it is rolling fields, you spot... A group of four individuals, and you would recognize them. Especially one who seems to be carrying an obnoxiously large book. Ah. Uh, could could we land? <clears throat> Why? Why? What for? My family's down there. Go oh, far! Go oh, far! Hard stop! All right. Um. I slow, I'll slow the ship down and descend, I guess. I guess this would be a good spot to bury him, then. Alright, I bring the ship down. Okay. Bring the ship down. You pull the lever. Come to a slowing halt. Um, post, while being up here, uh, you can see them. The, uh, the pair look up and point... And uh, the others start to, like, look up as well. And they see it starting to, like, you start to go down. And as you do, the four of them start to semi-take steps back. I'm going to try and wave, make myself look really big. Okay. Uh, Pull out my slide whistle and make a, a big toot. I'll walk over by toot. post and I'll cast light. Okay. As you cast light and make like a small little globule of glowing energy, the sun at this point is very close to fully set as well. It's almost nighttime. Um, so making the light is very noticeable. What catches their attention is the sound of the high pitched slide whistle that's being tooted. <laughs> What's a better word for that? It's slid? <laughs> Played. Played. I mean, that's not creative. <laughs> Whistled. 
I mean, to be fair, it's a slide whistle. <laughs> you guys are doot, your technicalities. Doot. Just call it doot doot. Doot doot. So, climbing down, eventually they spot the whistling sound and the light, and they start perking up. Um, the one with the book clutches the book closely to him. You can see that he's got a huge hood on that's covering the majority of his face. Um, there are two individuals that are almost identical copies of the same person. They're identical twins in what looks to be slightly leathered clothing and um, very light appearance. A lot of open to bare skin to the, to the uh, elements. And then what looks to be a very interesting individual who stands at about um, five foot so he's still short, but when you get closer down to him, there's a ridiculously large hat that had effectively given him height. He is essentially three feet tall, but um, the hat itself is two feet tall, and it's wide-brimmed with a very viciously large top hat. Once we reach the ground, Post is going to uh, run over and not hug anyone, but stand there and nod and begin talking. I'm gonna follow over. Okay. I'll also, I'll give Ryder the shovel first, though. I'll give it back. I tell the group, alright, we'll try to bring the body down slowly, and we'll find a spot. Um, I'm going to relay um, to the twins to go and help carry the body down and assist because that's pretty far away to the ground. There, there's some slight conversing I mean... between um, the two twins. Uh, Captain leans in. Are you alright, little one? I'm all right. He says There's... little one, but he is relatively Look. the same height as you, if not shorter. Age-wise, I suppose it's fair. Um, I'm gonna look pretty. I'm pretty visibly shaken up, but there's, you know, to a normal eye, it wouldn't look like I was at all nervous. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm okay. The what are they? Oh, I'm blinking. It's not ogres. Are they ogres? Orcs. Orcs. Orcs, thank you. Like, I had Shrek in my head. The, <laughs> the, uh... I think, that was, I think that's Tolfi you're thinking of. Yeah. The, uh, the orcs found me, um, in the middle of the night and took me to their camp. But these, these guys helped me escape. But, um, we lost someone trying to leave and they need help burying him. Death is pretty scary to them. Twins. Understood, understood. And they both walk out. Do you need help? Do you need help? As you're uh, yeah, carrying Zacharis' body down slowly. If you could just help us bring him down gently. Um, one of the twins leaps up, presses his hands onto the ground, puts his feet onto the shoulder of the other, and fully vertically stands onto his shoulders and is helping lift Zacharis' body gently down. Area like Tyler, what's around us? It's rolling hills. Like, there's no trees. Is there a top of a hill? Yeah, there, there's eventually a top of a hill. I want to find the tallest hill around that area. Okay. Um, it's a good few hundred feet away, but you would be able to see it. Let's take him to that hill, please. All right. Fall through. 
post, you do what you have to do here. We'll be over there. Okay. Post I'll... is gonna give them some space. I'll join you guys in a little bit. I'm sorry for your friend. As the rest of you sort of follow off their post and uh, Felix remaining. Mina staying up in the ship rather uh, concerned. I'm sorry about your friend, but thank you for returning our member to us. This is the smaller man. When uh, he speaks and he lifts his head up, you can tell that he is halfling. Okay. Um, At least we were able to help someone today. <laughs> well, um, post. I, you said that you were taken. Um, yes, that's correct. We've been searching for you, and I'm relieved by all means to know that you're back. I'm glad. I'm um, glad to be back. The one that's hooded, he comes up to you, and you know the reason why he's hooded. Um, once the sun is starting to go down further, he pulls Do his I... hood back. Oh, go ahead. Do I notice the big spell book? Uh, you notice the book. Uh, looking at it, there's no arcane sigils on it. It's it's not akin to a spell book. It almost looks like a large storybook. The binding of it is colorful. The... Uh, Cover photo itself <laughs> is also of um, thick designs of uh, rapid stories and almost uh, animalistic itself and childish in nature. Okay. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> um... Gizmo. <laughs> gizmo? The, the, hood, the hood reveals it's Gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> um, when the hood comes back, you can tell um, the individual that's standing there is Elvish, and he appears to be drow. His skin is slightly wrinkled, elderly even, for Elvish standards. And... He looks up to you, his eyes are slightly graying, and this just looks like an incredibly elderly drow. Post walks over and holds his hand. I'm glad you're back. We were all very worried. And when I went to find you for, for story before bed, you were gone. And so was the man. So we were very concerned. I'm sorry. It's nothing of your concern. It's not your fault. We very quickly learned not to trust him. So, if we ever do run into contact with him, be sure to stay close to me or Captain. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Child. Um, he's gonna. Post is gonna kind of hide underneath the man's cloak. Okay. Um, and uh, sit next to the book. <laughs> look at look at the. Try to grab the book to look at it. Okay. Uh, he he let, lowers the book down for you, and you can absolutely grab it by the hand and 
Which looks it. ridiculously large. Yes, it is effectively two feet tall of a book. I'm so four feet tall for anyone. It is half your okay. size. So I'm going to just sit and read while you guys go into your thing. Well, sit and look at pictures because I probably can't read. Felix, did you want to discuss anything? Otherwise, we'll cut over to Burial. Where are you guys heading? Well, we were, um, we were going to go back. We're just traveling group. Um. Is there anywhere you'd by chance like a lift to? Not especially. A lot of times we end up wherever we do. Um. We are a performing act. And Little Post here is a member of that act. So... We weren't about to leave without him. <coughs> if you're not aware yet, Post is... Um, they're kind of talking on a low lower tone as you're paying attention to the book uh, post. Hmm. Post is very sheltered from a lot of um, the going-ons in the world. He's a trusting lad and is um, To put it lightly, Post doesn't understand a lot of life. So what's happening right now isn't fully impacting him. You don't have to worry about any emotional distress on him. Will eventually understand, but <clears throat> we are a performing act, so we uplift as much as we can. We keep moving, and we keep audiences entertained to keep them from such trauma and troubles. I'm sorry for your friend. If there's anything we can do, we wish to help. There may be in time, but right now, I think they need time. I understand. I. Well, my name is Green, but people around here call me Capt been a pleasure to meet you. My associate here goes by Grimoire. It's not his actual name. His real name is actually Grim. So, Grimoire. Grimoire. Tails? It's suiting. Hmm? From Tails? Who? Grimoire. I don't know who that is. Uh, it's it's the, the, no, Tails. You tell, play Tails of Brasilia. I don't remember, though. Grimoire, the, the Norman lady who reads the book? Hashtag non-sponsored, move on. That's funny, but no, that wasn't the real reason for it. <laughs> um, all in all, our performing act consists of five people. Myself, in my arcane nature, Grimoire and his stories, and Lad and Lad as the latter duet. We may not be powerful, but we can damn well be distracting. Like I said, if you need anything, let us know. You brought Post back, and I am 
unbelievably grateful for what you've done. I'll talk to you later. I have a question you may have be able to help me with. But for now, I think I need to help them. And I'll head over to the hill. Okay. Those at the burial What is everyone doing? And Jordan, I'm sorry, but I can't. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Dang it! <laughs> it would be but, uh, heavily copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would have been nice, though. <laughs> if you can play it. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know how to I mean, copyright off. doesn't care who plays it. <laughs> uh, that's true. I could play it and then, uh. And then I'll just, uh. Mute the audio for that portion. D yeah. <laughs> how about that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll just do yeah, that. Yeah, it'd be nice. Nice situation. Okay, anyway, I saw digging the hole. Because I had All the right. shovel. I'm going to look for some rocks. Some, trying to make a tombstone kind of ish. There's, there's plenty around to construct one. Um, yeah, you'd be able to for sure. Since they're pretty far away and it's pretty dark, Post will cast dancing lights over the top of them but still stay where he is so that they just have some light to work. Okay. So burying a grave, creating a tombstone. At this point, um, while these were just starting, uh, Felix approaches as well. Tofi and Gopher lower... Tofi, Gopher, Lad, and Lad um, lower Zacharis' body onto the ground. Would anyone like to say any last words for a friend? Sure. Am I able to? Yeah. Okay. I just said sure, and no one said anything. No. All right. From troubled warlock to born again druid, this man we know, we once knew as Zacharis, sometimes Asparagus, Bear Karis. Whatever your names for him are, he was a beloved friend. The skeletons in his closet were innumerable, apparently, and none of us knew most of them. All it took was one action trying to save a friend from a potential demise under an evil god. It broke him. It was never the same man again. The only thing I question which I do not want to try I'm not trying to be obtuse here, but whether he did it of his own volition or not, he could have volunteered. I do know of a time he probably doesn't, wouldn't want me to say this, but there was a time where he once asked me to do this very thing with my own hands. 
and we were interrupted, but I at first refused. There have been many times after that I remember where he almost got what he wanted. And unfortunately, or fortunately for him, we will never know. He got it. The ghosts that haunted him in life are now gone. My only fear is that he might have more to worry about in death than he ever did when he was alive, but it's his journey now. And for us, we have lost a dear friend. For one, we've lost a brother. She then proceeds to, is he, he's buried, right? Uh, at this point, they, they've put him into the hole. Okay. She proceeds to put Moon Shadow, um, sickle part down kind of into the dirt, the sharp part, and just holds the, um, the handle and kind of like she goes into a praying position. Corellan, of course. To, mm-hmm. Yeah. Felix will do the same with his staff. I look around saying, anyone else want to say anything before we wrap things up here? And then I say, and then I'll say, if no one, then I'll say some things. Oh, here's another speech. <laughs> All right. I'll be honest with you guys. First time we met Sakaris, I couldn't really trust him. Felt like he had some devious plans that I that we was. Tr- maybe trying to do with us. I was uncomfortable within within our group the whole time. Until... Well, until me and him had our moments. Found out... He wasn't all that bad. Then... Well... With the giant lady... With the heist. With the whole situation that happened back to Greenus. He was always there for me. For a guy I only knew I known for a, a few months, I believe. He felt close. From an elf into a teethling. A bond formed from two different races. That felt like it could never break. My friend. I promise you, I won't let your death be here in vain. We will... Defeat the cult. And we will end this. Not just for your sake. But for all of our sakes. Doing it for you. And uh, another thing, everyone sees me looking into my bag and taking out a piece of paper. I have a note here I found with Zakaris. I will read it out loud to you guys. Hopefully I don't fuck this up honestly, but I'll try. So if if you're reading this, I'm dead. Now, now, don't get all teary-eyed about me. Knowing myself, I probably died doing something too ambitious or attempted to save you from doing something reckless. If I'm dead because you misinterpreted my grand scheme for revenge, then fuck you. 
I made some questionable decisions. I made some horrible mistakes before and after I met you all. But, but I don't regret any of it. So I write this though, as I write this though, I'm inclined to say that, I'm inclined to say that, that is a lie. One of many that I told, myself and you. I lived every day with the guilt that I carry for those I have conned, robbed, manipulated, and betrayed. I am haunted by those faces whenever I close my eyes. In the chance that you've killed me before I can explain myself, I leave you this. I was the only child of a human woman, and a fiend of some var variant variety? Of some variety. I left home at 18 to get out and see the world. So dumb and blind to the truth, the cult pulled me into the fold and promise promises of power and purpose. And I fell for it. I have reason I have a reason to hate them as much as you all undoubtedly do. But I won't explain I won't be explaining them. Let's just say I have a f have a flair of dramatic and leave it at that. And that's all the note says for me. And I also I take out many pieces of paper. He made he made a note for everyone here except for sadly Felix. Because we weren't part of the group till recently. So, I'll hand everyone their note, pretty much. You can read this now, or read it on your own time. Just, if you feel like sh you want to share what's on that note, then go ahead. Did he write one for Randall, by chance? No. No. <laughs> oh. This is the very old note, <laughs> apparently. Oh. Back to where Baggy. Okay, so I'll tell you how, how old this note is. I have a note for the odd men. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a note for Gopher? No. Oh yeah, no. Gopher too. No, I don't think so. I don't think. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so then, unless. <clears throat> what unless. Unless, you know, someone hands me that note. <laughs> uh, uh, nope, nope. It was just these few pieces of paper. <laughs> Are any, is anybody going to read it out loud? Uh, um, Rex. Hang on, I'm trying to find his note. Give me a second. I can't read mine because your dumb faces are in the way. <laughs> That's why I had trouble reading this one. I was like... I had to keep moving the picture around everywhere I went. <laughs> okay. Boop. There we go. Um... After after Jacqueline gets up from her prayer, she looks at the note. She reads it over, and then she does decide to read it out loud. <clears throat> to Jinx, an actual woman. Yours is probably the easiest to write. Finding a kindred spirit and building a mutual trust without having to overlay, overly explain things is rare. You no doubt had your secrets and reasons to disguise yourself, but dead men don't cry. I realized through you that us tieflings aren't defined by our demonic blood. We are better than that. I hope you find peace in life, sister. I look over at Rex. How about you, Rex? You gonna keep yours a secret, or...? 
I'll read mine out loud. For Rex. I consider what to write for you for a long time. Uh, a long time. For you longer than I'm willing to admit. But this is what I came up with. I'm sorry. You, you tried on several occasions to get me to open up to you. I never did. I sometimes ponder what your motives were if you were hindering my revenge. But I realize now, as I think about my death, that it was a mistake. I hope that this offers some kind of explanation of my actions, even if it wasn't what you were hoping to hear. That close up the letter and hold it tight to my hands. I'll also read mine then. For writer, you are arguably my closest and healthiest friend. From the moment we shared and encountered with that woman, I knew you were someone I could count on. You saw the best in my broken soul like few others could. Chances are you probably wouldn't have you probably wouldn't have let me die in some god's damn pit. So hopefully you picked out a nice place for me to die. If you killed me, however, I hope that you remember the look in my eyes when I died. And then I close up my note and say, that's it. I will not bother doing an inside check. Care? And then... Tyler. <laughs> I stopped playing on my pan flute. This one's for you, buddy. I <clears throat> wrote this song for you. <laughs> At the live one. <laughs> now, do you want me to do a performance check or... <laughs> no, I think uh. that uh, your performance of it is going to be difficult anyways because of the emotion. That's what if I had a a twenty three? I don't care. <laughs> oh, wow. You're filled with emotion, and you play unbelievably well. Oh, okay. I was about to say. Sad. What if I roll that one? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't but, stop. Um, hold on. My apologies, YouTube, and everything else, because this audio is going to get cut out. But he is effectively. Playing the Song of Healing from Majora's Mask. <laughs> As the song finishes, burying of the body, northern lights shining above, the sun has fully set. And I think it's almost, time for us to rest. There's almost a faint breeze that rolls in brushing up against the sides. And then that wind gets more intense. It gets more intense, but in a calming way. It's blowing hard with solidarity and vigor. A s large sign of life that feels throughout the air. And everyone can see where the tombstone lies for Zacharis Fells. A man with red hair, soft leathers, colored skin, places a hand. I didn't realize that so much would happen before he was able to rescue his friend. But 
but your words said something to me. I was prepared to assume that your side was feeble. But the benevolent lord wished to say something in regards to you all for your loss. And standing in front of the tombstone, Felix, Jacqueline, you recognize this individual as the red-haired man that first interrupted Zacharias' execution by Jacqueline's hand. He wished to go out on his own terms. And in a way, he did. However, I think that there is more. This almost feel. But those are words that would be better suited, I think. to be heard by her benevolent lord herself. His eyes change to a tint of red. The hair stands up on ends with small tufts of red flame. The robes themselves this time even lift up softly as this heat emanates in the given surrounding. Can I use prestigitation to counter that effect for me? To counter the heat? Well, he's, yes. Sure. It's not as hot for you. So there you go. The cool, refreshing breeze is still hitting you, effectively, and cooling you more so than the heat from the entity. Perfect. Zakaris falls. Is dead. Now as the man speaks, there's this undertone of a different voice that rings in into the pitch of the volume itself. He wrote notes. Spoke the truth. And cared deeply for each and every one of you. His actions were questionable. But his intentions were good. He was doomed to, and fated to find and slay me. And I think he alone has shown me that one side of this war revolves around you. In her hand, there's this small, very faint, bluish orb that expands into a tuft of red and puts it onto the onto uh, the grave itself. And you see the light going into the dirt. And in that moment, springing up almost angelically is this spiritual form of Zacharis. Zacharis? Is that you? Buddy? You look rather blue. 
drawing and, a new new tone, I guess. I'm very see through. Almost see through. It's just the trick of the light. To think the gods would smile on you so, given your backstory, I'm happy they did. Thank you. Jacqueline, do you have that dagger that your friend Zakaris gave to you? I do. Can I, I see it? it? Out. I pull it out and hold it out. Zakaris, I do not take this lightly. I had asked, given you an ultimatum to go out on your own, to accomplish a task, to be able to be out at your own terms, and in your own way. I've decided to retract that, and allow it anyways. The death you have my thanks that you hold, the death that you endured. Is not the first. This dagger has fallen the lives of two members of the Fell family. You would not remember it, for that was their intention. But you must remember. You must remember! And in that moment, she throws the dagger directly towards you in the spiritual form, and though it passes through you, your entire vision fades. You stand in the center of what looks to be a very large circle with several lined markings going down in some sort of pattern. It's unsure what that uh, symbol is, but you look down at your hands and you spot the knife with the red stained blood at the end of it. And that's when you notice, by looking down, the body of your mother, uncloaked, with blood pooling at your feet, is at your feet. You feel this immense hatred, this immense regret pitted at the entity of your soul. And you look forwards, looking down, looking up, you feel almost empty. And much in a similar fashion as to when you spoke with the goddess of spring back in the Feywild, that voice deep, undertoned voice that you learned was Maximilian's. Speak once again. Yes. When you look up, there's a new figure, though. A figure walking towards you. Hood down in purple garb a black-scaled dragonborn who looks at you. It is done. Holds his hand out and takes the dagger. Now you are one. And stabs you straight into the chest. You feel pain, but there's this wash that flows out from it, almost as if your entire being is just pooling. 
being so young, being so vulnerable at such a state where you had slain your own mother with the very blade. There's a moment where you look up in the eyes of Resmir, the black dragonborn, looks back. And your vision goes dark. Moments later, you come to, standing in a courtyard, amongst others. And you look down. There's no wound. There's no pain. It almost felt like a dream. And that's when, standing beside you suddenly, is this feminine figure floating in flame. Hair is nothing more than just fire itself in a slight orangish tint. Eyes are burning, skin itself deep undertones of red. Your pact. Your pact made with Maximilian was broken the moment it was made. You lost your life in that room. But you were Why? Right back. Why did he help me then? Maximilian is a vengeful entity. And he was claiming your deal. But your soul returned to your body. And of that, I do not know why. It's one of the few things in this world that I was not able to bear witness to. But I can tell you, you died in that room, and Maximilian was going to claim your soul. Why he decided to help you, I believe, was he had nothing to lose. The pact was already done. The deal that was forged was already set in stone. And he claimed you. He owned you. Whether you completed your task or not. He would have taken you. That's why your task was inevitably set to fail. But this is yours. And this is how I am going to make sure that you are going on your terms and not his. In that moment, light vanishes and you are standing once again in the dark, well, semi-dark, with everyone that's above effectively your grave. You do not have much. There's only so much time left. But the words said in this moment I will allow one thing well I suppose several Zacharis Fells
torn from life, faded to take actions that were not your own. Of those that stand here, whom do you trust to carry on the fell legacy? In, in what way? They will be an embodiment of you. They will carry on a fragment of you. And as they grow, prosper, and live, so till you. I promised a long time ago that I would help. It, it has to be Jacqueline. I promised her that I would help in any way I could. I see. Jacqueline. Do you accept? Um, she pulls out his staff. I already have. Then time will soon approach. Stepping towards Zacharis's spectral form, she places a hand onto you, and you can feel it tangibly through your form. And in an instant, there's a severance. In the back of your mind, you felt that unnerving feeling, that presence, that speaking of Tiamat. And it's gone. It vanishes, much like a stinging feeling. And it's gone. It's almost like this uplifting energy is just washed into you. Jacqueline, you feel in the back of your mind a deep-seated, raging, screaming sound of an entity that is far angrier than anything else that you would have possibly heard in your life. And your senses are heightened. You feel the words of power in the friends around you. You can almost see it as if it's a physical force. You can see each and every unique word of power between them. And you can almost feel Zacharis's presence in your thoughts. In that moment, Zacharis's tangible or spectral body begins hardening from lower to top. If you have any words, this is your time to speak. <sighs> well, I love you all. You are the family I wish I never had lost. I know you will go on to do great things. You will stop all of this and you will liberate everyone. 
Please promise me that you will. And then come find me in hell after I kill Maximilian. With a sly smile. Soon the entirety of the spectral body hardens and fades, withering to ash and vanishing. And with that, maybe semi-early, but I think we are going to call this the episode. How's everyone doing? Oh! Oh! I'm ready. Yes! <laughs> no! I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the Zakaris Zakaris versus Maximilian arc. Yeah. <laughs> In the underworld. In the underworld. Yes, that that great arc. <laughs> Can't wait for that. I feel like my character has gotten just a tiny bit more complicated. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk Great. after after recording, but um, I'm fucking tearing up, by the way. Ooh. So this is something this that I'm just going to bring up. <laughs> this wasn't happening right now. Uh, um, I, not, not at all. I spoke to Zacharis the entire time that you guys were doing your burial. I'm literally crying right now. Um, <laughs> this would have happened at the end of this entire arc. Once you no. made it back to Zakara, saved Gopher. Spoilers. That was when this would have happened. I mean, if you do, I'm just saying, <laughs> if that were to happen, that's when this whole thing would happen. Oh, and Zakaris, regardless of whether or not he was alive. Because right now, there was... I changed it. Because of your fucking words and your damn emotions altering me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so yes. Zacharis couldn't have died. Every, at least once a week. If he were to die, Maximilian would have brought him back. Hmm. His heart would have been forcibly what? started again. Not by his own choice. That I did not tell, Mason. <laughs> no, I didn't know this at all. Fuck. Wait, so what was the first time he died this week? <laughs> no, I'm just oh, saying, just... like, once a week. So, like, if it didn't happen, he's it just didn't happen. It was... When it happened... One week would have to pass before it could happen again. So, so did he die last... recently? No. He tried to jump off. I changed. Count? I changed how it worked because I think ultimately it would have been the same result. Ooh, ooh. And this was too good of a moment. I feel of a role playing so... opportunity. Um, Miss World Adventures, where the players make a plan, make a plan, and horribly execute them. He's gonna the stick his hand out of the ground. The has to clean up. Yeah, I, I, I was like, I hear him pops a whole door. I was like, Whoa! that would have happened. Like no joke. When people yeah, went gonna... to bed, I was gonna be like, Zacharis, you hear a voice in the back of your mind, and it's Maximilian saying, "No." Wake up! And you would be conscious again and have to burst oh. out of the grave. <laughs> Coming out, it would have been raining and storming, and you'd be like, oh. ah! We will be freaking out, because like, Honestly, Zombie! <laughs> Honestly, oh, shit, if that would have happened, he would have immediately died again. <laughs> oh shit, kill it! <laughs> so this entire time I've been a revenant, and you're only just telling me now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. He would have died when we got back anyway? Uh, he, yeah, he, like, <coughs> when, like, all this that happened with the red-haired man would have happened after saving Gopher. Mm -hmm. Zacharis would still be gone at that moment. 
Okay. So, thank you everyone for listening to this extremely emotional episode. Another emotional one. Oh my god. <laughs> this might be the most emotional though that we've gotten. I mean, yeah. It's this a, time a party it, member. Died. Oh hell yeah. This is it, yeah. It's it, a party it, member. <laughs> the last time I've seen emotion like this was when <laughs> Escobert died, and <laughs> everyone was giving their speech for Escobert. Like. Yeah. Uh, it was sad, but it wasn't as sad. As right, it was like, what, five sessions in? That was when Jake got choked up saying his speech. <laughs> uh. Oh, the, the don't, don't worry, I almost, I would have gotten it now, uh, but I was, like, practicing it in my head and, like, getting my, stealing my, you know, resolve <laughs> to say it without stuttering at all. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you again on another Miss World adventure. Ciao. Bye. Bye.